Virtual reality or VR has literally taken the world by storm. Companies such as Google and PlayStation are all jumping on board. So today the Edge crew decided to come out to a company within South Africa that's leading in this field to not only check out what the device is all about, but I get to play with it. And I can assure you, after watching this, you're gonna be very, very jealous of me, but you're also never gonna watch video the same way again. Let's get inside. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Good. I'm Leroy. Ulrico. Ulrico, nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm Sam. Sam, nice to meet you too. Do you guys uh, do cool things here? We like to think so. <laughs> Obviously, I first want to get, you know, the theory behind what VR and virtual reality is all about. So, uh, we can have a quick chat. Sounds good. Awesome. Let's have a seat. So you guys do something very cool, yeah. It's all about VR, virtual reality. And for people who are out there watching who don't know what that medium is, what exactly is it? So it is a new medium. And the difference between 360 video or virtual reality compared to fixed frame content is that you have the choice as to where you look around. So you are placed in the middle of the content. For the first time in human history, we can now do that. You mentioned it's a, it's a new medium. Is it not you know, scary you know, immersing yourself into something new which you actually don't know anything about? Well, I, I think there is a fear of the unknown, but we live life that way. Yeah. Um, we can turn our, our head and, and choose to look around us. And so I think we have many years worth of conditioning to undo um, because virtual reality is actually a lot more uh, intuitive than, uh, than fixed frame television. The first time I really heard about you know, virtual reality was obviously a few years ago, but the first time I could actually get to immerse myself into it is when Samsung brought out the Gear VR, and everybody's been talking about it. Where else are we going to be seeing this roll out? Um, look, I think that uh, we're going to see the high-end consumer uh, products come out first. Gamers are going to pick up uh, devices mm -hmm. like the Oculus Rift, which has also benefited from a lot of PR. Um, and eventually it's going to trickle down. But I think the interesting thing is that 95% of the hardware required is already in most people's pockets um, by means oh. of their cell phone. So how does it exactly work? I put this thing on my head. I mean, I, I, can, I connect something to it and then what? I just see a shark cage diving and the shark attacking me? Pretty much, yeah. Uh, so the video wraps around your head and the sensors inside your phone or inside the Gear VR or inside the Oculus Rift headset yeah. um, are able to track which direction you've moved your head in and show you the appropriate content. Wow. And I see, you know, there's been a big shift now and I haven't tried it yet, um, is with Facebook and their 360 photos. You take a panorama shot and then, you know, somehow it makes it beautiful as a little video. Is this kind of what virtual reality is, but it's introducing us in small bits? Yeah, these are very early days. Um, we like to tell people that uh, in comparison to the development of the cell phone, we're still speaking on a brick right now. And with all these Oculus, you know, like you spoke about the Oculus Rift, uh, is this all connected to your cell phone or is this going to be connected to a PC or a video game or, or what? Depends on the device. So on the lower end, you've got the Google Cardboard. Mm -hmm. and the Google Cardboard uses a cell phone device. I saw that and I'm not for that. I don't know why. It's just, it just, I don't know. It it's not pretty. It's not a pretty device, but it's a very important device um, because it allows us to get virtual reality out into the masses. Mm -hmm. um, it is quite a quite a singular experience, virtual reality. People experience it one on one, and right now it's not social. Um, and so it's important that we can achieve scale, and Google Cardboard allows us to do that in quite a cost-effective way. So for people watching, that's the cheaper version of experiencing something like virtual reality, right? It is. You can honestly Google it or watch a YouTube video and make your own one at home. You probably can't make your own video at home, yeah, uh, but, but you can make your own cardboard yes. at home. So Google have open sourced the design and they're happy for people to go and construct and print and make their own. And with the more serious ones, I mean, what are we looking at in price wise? Are these things expensive? Very expensive, yeah. You're looking at about, uh, for an Oculus Rift, probably about 10,000 Rand for the headset and then 20,000 wow. Rand for the PC that drives it. Wow. And, and let me take this case, I mean, obviously there's an app store you need to download and you need to pay for certain games you're going to be watching. So honestly, the costing never really ends. Well, it doesn't. I mean, we, we're in an interesting phase right now in VR with um, how, how it is that it is monetized at all. Mm. Um, and so the play is going to be along the lines of something like a Netflix model where there's a paywall. Um, so you'll buy a subscription in exchange for premium content, whether that's gaming, whether that's entertainment. Um, but right now, very few people have tried it because VR adoption isn't where we expect it's going to be soon. 
I was speaking to someone when I went to a launch um, of one of these VR headsets and they told me like going on the line we'll be able to immerse ourselves into a studio with Justin Bieber, mm -hmm. he'll talk to us, we'll be able to like you know add our two cents worth to his recordings. How exactly does that work? How do they film those things and then give us the opportunity to honestly interact with it? Well something like that would probably be a, a live streaming rig and so it, it would involve a camera that looks in all directions at the same time present with Justin in studio Yeah. Um, and then the same way that a Google Hangout works or a YouTube live stream, um, it would beam that content through to a consumer watching on a platform like YouTube, except in their case, they can click in and look around and there'll be a little pane on the right-hand side where they can interact with them. And for something like a wildlife, like a feeding or like capturing a whale jump out the water, how does that stuff get filmed in that immersive, you know, vibe? That, that's an excellent question. And we're trying to figure out the answers to, to that question because wildlife is a whole nother beast. Not only can we not control what the subject matter does, but yep. the subject matter doesn't care at all about our equipment. Um, so we're working on a shoot right now where we're actually developing uh, what we're calling our bulletproof rigs um, involving a black box in which we put our cameras. So the whole point is for the equipment to get stampeded um, because oh, wow. we want the content of a stampede but we don't want to lose all of our cameras. This is literally like a black box in an airplane. Exactly. Everything else gets destroyed but all that remains is that. That's it. Is that not risky? It is risky. <laughs> it is. But you got to buy a lot of ticket to win the lottery. So. Ah, I like that one. And then um, I was doing some research and I found out about VR journalism. What exactly is that? Is literally someone writing, but instead of you writing, you're shooting something? Exactly, yeah. Um, so it's about journalists being out in the field and being able to report mm -hmm. stories. Um, and instead of writing the stories, you know, in text and publishing in, in a newspaper, it would be allowing consumers to experience the scene as if they were standing there themselves. What do you think are some of the challenges going forward for something like this, especially in South Africa? And South Africa is actually leaps ahead in terms of VR adoption on the brand and, oh, wow. and advertising side. Broadband is probably our biggest challenge with VR, is that the, it's very content rich, it's you know, big file sizes. Um, and so getting that beamed to people is definitely a challenge. What do you think is going to be most popular when, when it does roll out to like home stuff, stuff that work by the cell phone or, or that you connect to a, a, a game, gaming console? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think the the advent of virtual reality was stimulated by the gaming world. Yeah. But I think that entertainment is going to be the future of these headsets. And I think that live streaming, particularly in sports, is going to be a massive market. Well, there we go. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, on to that thing. And you guys stay tuned because after the break, we introduce you to something completely new. It's a new medium. And I must brag, I'm going to be playing with it first. So we'll see you guys after the break. So I told you guys I'm going to get to play with a device that's pretty much just coming to the country. You will never be able to find it. I'm just going to put that out there. Telmo, welcome to Edge. Good to have you with us. Thanks for having us. So uh, I see these two devices in front of me and I can assume obviously, well, the one looks a lot sexier than the other one. Mm -hmm. um, what is the difference between these two? So basically both of these are the Oculus Rift. Uh, this is the older model, yep. um, which was the SDK2, uh, which we've had for a while. And this is our brand new one. Uh, and this is the consumer version. Um, of the Oculus Rift. This one's got about double the amount of resolution as that, and yep. it's got some nice things like uh, some headphones and a controller. Um, yeah. So, so something like this now obviously will be available to the consumer. Um, yeah. And in South Africa, can we find them yet? Uh, they're not available just yet. It was very hard to find these. Um, we brought them over from America. Okay. Um, this could potentially be one of the only ones in South Africa at the moment. It looks like a great device though, but I mean, is it a lot better than the Gear VRs that we are seeing in the stores at the moment? They are quite a lot better. The resolution is better. Um, it also plays off a, a high-end gaming computer, so it's got all that graphics power. So mm -hmm. um, the Gear VRs are doing amazing things, and uh, uh, the Samsung S6s and 7s uh, resolution is really good, but it's still on a phone. Uh, so especially for when it came, comes into gaming and a uh, high-resolution video, uh, it's much better to use something like the Oculus Rift. Can this device also be then attached to a cellular device? No, not. No. So the, this has got the screens built into this here, okay. where something like the Gear VR will you'll actually slide your your phone into that. Okay, cool. Well, uh, I, I I don't want to talk anymore. I want to play with this thing with this device now. So what are you going to show me? First off, we're going to run you through a little demo that we've got. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to see some wildlife and some events and uh, some other interesting things. Here you go. Ah. To try a journey on that. Thank you very much. It's like a sunset over here. Sounds and there's trees. It's kind of weird, I can't see my feet. Look up and look at the tree. I 
right here. Oh. Look, it's euphonic, fresh. I won't need to go to a musical festival anymore, like, you know, Joburg Day and all those other things, Ultra Festival, just watch it at home. Wow. Enjoy that. This is amazing. Are you back? Yeah. Um, and one thing that really stood out for me is the whole like music festival with Euphonic and Fresh. It just goes to show like I don't really go out a lot. I'm quite a boring <laughs> person. Um, I could literally watch a concert from my couch yeah. with like a whole bag of chips with no one pushing and shoving me. This is amazing. In the future, and you'll be able to live stream that. Uh, that's already started happening. Um, this is, should, this uh, is a cool toy. I should show you the uh, little Ellie documentary that we've got. Oh, you got some more? Yeah. Okay. Have a look at that. Yeah. Excuse me for a minute. Oh, wow. Tell me, how did you guys film this stuff? Like the elephant's right here. Uh, basically, we have to put the rig there, uh, leave it recording and, and hide. It's so nice with the sounds of just everything around, the birds and the water. So we actually do uh, 3D audio as well. Um, so you're actually kind of getting surround sound in the headphones. I actually forget that I can turn around and there's more behind me. The options are limitless. And limited with this thing. Every time we speak to someone, they come up with their own idea. So it's just crazy. Everyone, as soon as they understand what VR does, uh, 10, 20 ideas come to them on different applications and where it can get used. Wow, th this is amazing. I, yeah, I am honestly in awe of this little device. It's, yeah, I think I need to save. I need to work harder so I can buy something like this that's possibly like 30,000 Rand. That's amazing. Thank you so much for letting me use that. Awesome. That's amazing. Enjoyed. Well, guys, you need to save up if you want one of these babies. They're quite pricey, but trust me, you want one. Enough of the virtual world onto the real world. Don't go away after the break. We are back when I take you on a walk through a new precinct in Johannesburg where tech innovation comes to life. We'll see you guys after the break.